Hi guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I'm Megan, the faithful fibromyalgia warrior. And if you've not been here before, welcome. And for those of you coming back again, welcome back. Um, it's been a bit longer than I would have wanted between my last video and this one. But what with the majority of the world on fire at the moment, literally, um, other countries, you know, on the verge of nuclear war or, you know, other disasters, um, it's, it's had me really just taking a break, just taking a bit of time and just really, um, having to go back and trust in God that, that he is in control, um, that certainly things are going to happen as they're meant to happen and hopefully with good outcomes, but that it's out of my control. And for me, that's a big thing. You know, um, I used to think that about food, that it was out of my control, that I couldn't deal with it, that I either had to binge it constantly or I was purging all the time. And, um, you know, and as a result, I was bulimic for over 30 years. And it took me a while to realize that part of the problem was I was also filling myself with highly addictive food in the form of plants like vegetables and fruits, um, as well as all the processed stuff. And until I got that out of my body, it didn't matter how much I tried to be diligent, how much I tried to restrict my calories. I could never seem to lose enough weight. Um, I was always higher than my ideal weight levels and I could never figure out why. And I was hungry all the time. Um, because again, these things are highly addictive. And so these last, this last bit of time, I have been binge watching all these really, really amazing videos by Steak and Butter Gal, um, Carnivore Yogi, Go Keto with Casey, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Ken Berry. Um, I've discovered a couple of new ones in uh, Rebecca Farmer, um, as well as, as a new one just recently with a young man by the name of uh, Joel Schwartz or Joey Schwartz. Sorry about that, Joey. And it's just been really amazing. Now, oh, and of course, I cannot forget Professor Ben Bigman and and of course um, Professor Bart K. And someone I watched in an interview um, who gave a whole anthropological um, perspective to show that yes, in fact, over the history of the human race, we have been designed by God to predominantly eat animal meats and their fats and that any fruit or roots like that we might have eaten way back when would have simply have been only during a time of unable to find food to eat because we killed off all of the megafauna so all the mammoths and woolly mammoths went extinct mainly because of we overhunted them but also with climate change and the end of the ice age they just went, they just, they just died off. And so while we still had wild animals, we would have been able to hunt at that time it would have been a lot harder. They would have been much faster. They weren't as big. So it took a whole new level of, of evolving and, and, and developing different tools and weapons in order to catch these animals and then eat them. And there is, um, I think they were saying there's now DNA tool testing that they have where they can actually prove scientifically what humans ate exactly and what sorts of animals they ate. Um, and again, in a lot of areas where today like grains and cereals um, and legumes and things like that would be majorly popular, that was only because um, there was a, a agricultural revolution when the big game animals were killed off or and went extinct. And so, for example, you look at the Mayan and the Inca and the Aztec cultures, for an example, um, are heavily grain based. Why? Because there were no domesticated animals yet in the Americas, uh, certainly not in um, the southern states, but definitely not. Um, through Mexico, Central and South America. Those, those were not introduced until Christopher Columbus came 
1493. So you have thousands of years where they have to now catch smaller animals. They, they have to be quicker or get smarter, build traps, evolve their brain power to develop tools, um, and so forth. And so to prevent starvation, they had to figure out which berries they could eat without dying immediately, which plants they could potentially eat without getting sick and dying. And so those things came about as a point of necessity, which I think when God describes um, all the plants and all those who have, that have seeds, which he does, which, which is described in the book of Genesis chapter nine, uh, within the first, I think, 15 verses, he reminds us all um, that all of the animals on the planet were given for us to have as food. And I think it's implied that when, when God references all the grasses, those are for the animals, not necessarily for us. So I think as a species, and I believe anthropology would confirm this as well, and, and human evolution would confirm that we would eat these things in order to prevent starvation. But if we had meat available, that would be our first choice. And if you think about some of the, uh, now there are still Mayan people that exist. Um, there's approximately, I don't know if these are still accurate numbers, approximately 6 million of them that live mostly in um, Central and Northern South America. And their diet is majorly consisting of maize or corn, like an old kind of corn, if you like, as well as other cereals, some legumes, chilies, squash, so vegetables with seeds, um, and whatever, at the, in, previously in history, whatever wild game or fish they could catch. But unfortunately, it was because it became easy for those in warmer climates, right? Um, where plants did grow, obviously it's easier to catch a plant than it is to say catch a fox or um, catch a bird or even try to catch fish and live off that. So it wasn't optimal, but uh, over time, obviously their bodies have adapted. Um, again, and, and please reference any of these people because they touch, they touch on all of this as well, but based on the anthropological studies, um, especially when, when Mickey Bandor was discussing this in his, he did a, an interview with Judy Cho, um, uh, nutrition with Jody on YouTube. She's great. And obviously people would eat occasional bits of honey or fruit if they had to, to give them a burst of energy in between when they were able to catch their animals. You know, and once domesticated animals, cows, pigs, um, goats, sheep were introduced to central, so to Southern North America, primarily Mexico, Central America and South America, then that did make a change and they probably ate a bit more meat, but it's of course much easier to eat a grain and a plant that's there and doesn't go away, especially if over, over thousands of years, that's what you've learned to do. And the Aztecs, which would be eventually become the people in Mexico over time, uh, were the only people of those three traditional um, groups, if you will, who made um, the made maize pancakes with every meal. Um, so basically tortillas. So uh, what they learned to do over lots and lots of time, is they learn to grind up maize or maybe maybe rice, but I don't know that rice really didn't grow there. So they would grind up the maize. Somebody somewhere over hundreds and thousands of years discovered, hey, if we grind this up into a powder and we add a bit of water, maybe a little bit of animal fat, right? Stir it all up and you know, you can either eat it like a porridge, which is what they did, or they learned how to make a dough and to make tortillas. And so it's a traditional thing for those cultures, which is why you see them in those areas, why they are particularly um, predominant. And even though the native people, the I believe the term is Amer Amerindians, 
um, who eventually came to Canada and the U.S. Um, may have had, you know, some use, use for maize. Um, they did not serve it with every meal. Why? Because they had um, bigger animals that they could still hunt for for a longer period of time. So the people that stayed and settled, it would seem, in in Mexico, Central America, and South America, um, loved the climate, did not want to have to head back up anywhere that was colder and settled there. And, and you've got the people who, so, <clears throat> um, so scientists, archeologists, anthropologists, those who do all this testing and everything else, um, way outside my wheelhouse, but super cool, super interesting. Um, modern day humans, we can trace back our ancestry 200,000 years ago to Africa. And of course, at that time, there was plenty of buffalo, or not buffalo, there was plenty of mastodons, there was plenty of mammoths. The woolly ones were further north, right? They, they would adapt and therefore they had fur. The other ones that were in the warmer climates had no fur. They didn't need it. Isn't God amazing? Allowing our bodies to adapt over time to different situations, right? So they would hunt the big game in the warm climates. And when those started to become scarce, I think what probably happened is the people, which I believe are referred to as the Amerindians. I could be wrong. If I am, I apologize. Like I said, it's, I know it's not my wheelhouse. It's just so cool. So some of them migrated northwards, you know, they, um, they headed not just a bit north, like they headed up and towards Europe and over thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, some of them went as far north as Siberia. And <clears throat> then you had lots of those who came over in waves across the, um, the foot, the, um, land bridge into Northern, uh, Alaska, Northern Can Canada, and of course, Greenland. And these guys were, uh, paleo Eskimos, but for some reason they just, uh, as, as a group, they disappeared. They, they disappeared. They're not quite, nobody knows yet exactly what happened, but one of the final waves of people that crossed over that land bridge, um, <clears throat> they would eventually, um, develop and become today's Inuit. And they settled there. They adapted. So when all the big game and there wouldn't have, there were obviously would have been left with less options being up north. There were no plants, no fruit, no seeds, none of that. And once the woolly mammoths went extinct, they adapted. They, they learned how to hunt whales. They learned how to hunt polar bears and seals and whatever other animals, pardon me. Sorry, just finishing my water there. Lived in that Arctic area at the time. <clears throat> and there are still some, and, and so of course they never knew plants. And that indigenous population still exists today. And <clears throat> those who still live there were not hit once by COVID. Now, keep in mind, they're isolated. So they're not around all kinds of people, of course. But um, now the downside is, of course, they've never been they They would be at risk if they came further south because... Having, they've never been exposed to European diseases. They've never been exposed to uh, <clears throat> anything that would require a vaccine because of where they are. So that just tells me that if you have people who for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years, just, just, just taking those who have now, be, we now know them as the Inuit, thrive on that type of, just eating animal meats and blubber and, you know, I'm sure fish if they can catch it, they do amazing. 
They, they have virtually no health issues whatsoever. Um, the same could be said for the, the tribes that still live, the, the native tribes that still live in Australia and New Zealand, like say the Maori, I, I believe that's how you say it. You know, those who still follow a traditional appropriate way of eating <clears throat> have virtually no health issues. But the ones who have um, decided to, sorry, to not live ancestrally and have decided they want to be a part of modern society and have taken on a Western diet, diabetes, obesity, um, a lot of um, health issues that way. There's a lot of um, cavities and all sorts of stuff like that. Lots of liver and kidney issues because they stop eating a traditional animal meat diet and they filled it with, you know, processed crap. And of course, for such a long time, they didn't do that. So, you know, I don't know, just, I found that so fascinating. And yet there's so many people who, who they don't have any idea. They don't realize that what they're eating is poison. And, you know, I'm so, sometimes it's so frustrating because I want to say to everybody, look, <clears throat> eating a meat-based diet is absolutely what God wanted for us. That's why he gave all of these animals. That's why he created them all because they were meant to be food for us. So not, not everything maybe we could tolerate, but that's why the animals were there. He created them as food coming from my Christian point of view. And I'll be honest, I have been very, very, very pure carnivore just over two and a half weeks and I have never felt better. If you had told me um, two and a half years ago that I would be able to lose weight, reduce inflammation, uh, reduce my chronic pain, have good sleep patterns, um, and not have massive mood swings and brain fog and constant sharp lower back pain, I would have said you were insane. There's no way that'll ever end for me. This is my life and I'm stuck with it. And yet finding carnivore has made such a big difference. Now I started out keto and I quickly realized that even though plants are okay on keto, I don't tolerate them at all. And I kept thinking, well, I loved them as a kid and I never had issues with them. But of course I had so much other stuff going on like IBS and anxiety and being bulimic that I didn't notice it. But I cannot do plants because as it has been said by many other people on YouTube in the carnivore space or the, you know, this area is plants are trying to kill us and they're right. And again, two and a half years ago, I would have laughed. I was like, really, how are they going to do that? They can't move. So I just feel so much better. I, okay, I, it's, yes, it is amazing I lost the weight. But beyond that, my brain fog is almost non-existent. You know, almost non-existent. I still have moments. I'm going to be 50 in a couple weeks. So I think that's part of it. But overall, it's non-existent. And I never thought that was possible. And it's been amazing because it's allowed me to really get, dig deep into, yes, these, these really cool, deeply scientific videos um, that I couldn't explain myself, but I love hearing the experts discuss stuff. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I have no capability really for any kind of in-depth math or science. But I love hearing about it now, you know, so listening to Professor Bart K, um, not only explaining things like the Randall cycle and um, what that what that is and why it matters and just all of the topics he covers are fantastic, even when he breaks down everything to the smallest atom um, and check out those those videos of his. They're fantastic. Some of the people he's had on his guests, it's been amazing. And just his, his own personal story is really cool. So I love hearing all of the science. 
And I was afraid that if I heard the science that, oh, maybe it'll make me not have faith in God. In fact, no, it has deepened my faith. You know why? Because it's reminded me that actually God's the one who has created these scientists, who has allowed certain people to evolve over time to be so intelligent that they're able to explain, no, this is actually what the body does. This is real. This other stuff is garbage. And if you want to have optimal health, um, which I do, and I want to treat my body like a temple, uh, as, as you know, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, that means me not putting garbage in it. And <clears throat> it is hard. You know, I still have chronic pain, but it's dull. But my inflammation is very low now. I, I don't even notice it that often. Um, as I said, <clears throat> I seem to have boundless energy, which I never had. Um, not before my back injuries, even, you know. I was I was having to take eight cups of coffee a day just, just to try to stay awake. And of course, the more you drink, the, the less it works and the more you have to drink and so forth, right? Um, Pardon me. And then as much as I understood in, in my head that, yeah, I probably am addicted to coffee, I wasn't willing to change. I didn't think I could change. And, and yet, uh, what a difference. You know, um, watch, watch Kelly Hogan's videos, Dr. Sean Baker. There's just so much great content that's out there. Um, George Ede um, and many others. Um, check them out. I mean, this is who I watch. This is who I think definitely needs to be listened to because it, it's, it's so true. And people, I know I can't change people overnight, but um by simply being a great example and not, you know, nagging my husband, oh, cut down on your carbs and maybe don't eat all that. He's on his own realized, I don't really need as many vegetables. Yeah, I'm going to lay off the bread. I don't, I don't want, I don't want a lot of carbs in my diet because he's trying to control his type 2 diabetes as well as um, his blood pressure. And you know what? I would, I would put him not, maybe not quite keto, but cer certainly much more low carb than the standard British diet, which is horrifying, really. Um, he's not quite ready, I don't think, to hear that plants are trying to kill him, but he will accept that the cruciferous vegetables and some of the other ones we shouldn't eat because if nothing else, they cause massive problems with our gut. They're hard to digest. So, you know, it's little by little, right? It's a step. And he's been really great. He's been doing this now almost six weeks. He's down about 12 pounds. He's back at the gym. He's getting back in shape. Not because I harped at him, but just because he, I guess, saw what I did and how I was feeling and what worked for me. And he's decided, okay, I'll, I'll try it to a certain degree. And to me, that's amazing. And it just makes me realize that God is so great. Um, that he planned for us to have our optimum health by eating the animals he created for us. You know, that obviously there may be times where we run out for a time. And so there are maybe certain things we can eat if, if they're available right then. But based on how we, now that we know how to raise our own cows and sheep and pigs and goats and whatever else we decide to have, um, we don't have to do that. You know, for the longest time, the indigenous people of North America um, did really well uh, health-wise because what were they eating? Mostly animal meat. They followed the buffalo and the bison and caribou and elk. And, you know, in the end, when the Europeans came, we helped ourselves to that as well. And so a lot of those things got overhunted and a couple of things are extinct at this point. And of course, what wiped them out were all the lovely diseases that were carried over from Europe. And the same goes for um, the, uh, the Aztecs and the Incas. But um, that, that aside, so um, 
they survived because they they ate meat and a lot of times they might have like pemmican which is kind of like a bread but there's no yeast in it we had to make it once uh for girl scouts as a, i don't know anyways so they would have pemmican and they would dry a lot of the meat so they'd be like jerky that would last them for a long time until they you know could catch their next animal um and that's more what we are supposed to be doing but i get it, it it's hard you know like i'm sitting in a chair in a house I don't have to go out with a bow and arrow. I don't have to go out with a crossbow and, and hunt a deer or anything like that. Um, luckily, but I also don't want to just rush out and fill my face with junk anymore. Um, you know, luckily we found a butcher not too far from here, fresh, you know, raised properly, treated properly, which, which, is actually pretty much the case for any farm here in the UK. I don't think we do uh, massive feedlots of cows and things like that because, well, we're a much smaller population. We're not trying to feed as many people. But I a lot of ground beef and egg yolks, little salt, bacon once in a while. I ate loads at first. I find I don't crave it as much anymore. And that, I think, was more the salty content of it. You know which is good because that means my body's adjusting and i'm getting through that because i found when i was still drinking lots of regular coffee with either milk in it or almond milk i know um it was um making me crave fattier salty things like bacon now because i've taken all that stuff out of my coffee i can enjoy uh, there's been a, f a number of times where I've just had literally I've just fried up some ground beef and a little bit of salt and I was it was amazing so that's just me that that's what I've come to and if you had told me two years ago that I would be eating meat sometimes eggs and drinking mostly water I'd say you're crazy I am not giving up my coffee forget it but you know what here we are so this is what's helped me and i just i make this i'm making this video because i think it's important um for people to know that there is hope um that we are not necessarily trapped in our physical situations forever um now when i go out i still need to take my electric wheelchair why well because quite frankly I can't walk that far. Um, I still do have back issues and it still makes my uh, fibromyalgia flare up if I walk any great distance. So that hasn't changed. That may not change. You know, if it does, great. Then that is God working. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Great, because that's still God working. And if I had not changed the way I ate, I never ever would have lost the brain fog. I never would have been able to reconnect with God and my faith. And I would still be with dealing with severe anxiety and depression and definitely my bulimic tendencies. So I'm putting this out there to say that, look, I know I'm not a doctor. And like I say, all these people I've mentioned, they are experts. Um, they are doctors or professors. They are well-educated. Oh, and Dr. Sarah Zaldivar, watch their videos. They have fantastic content, um, especially if you like the deep dive science stuff, which like I do, um, then it's perfect, right? But it made a huge difference to me. And I've never felt better in my whole life. And I'm including the time before my back injury as far as overall energy and confidence and just overall good health. So I hope this helps. Um, I'm just going to show you guys quickly a few pictures just because I want you guys to see where I was before and where I am now. Just, just so you can see that, yeah, okay, I'm not just making it up. Like, oh, it was massive. No, I really was. I was very, very fat. I was 190 pounds at my heaviest two years ago. Two, two years and a bit ago, and now, now I'm not. And 
I'm getting a bit more flexibility and mobility in my joints and it back into my lower back. Will it heal fully? Only God knows that. I don't know. I trust him either way, but eating carnivore or even, even when I was more heavy meat based keto, that started me on the right path. But when I went full keto a couple weeks ago, it made a huge difference. And so I hope it helps you guys. Um, but don't give up, okay? God, God has always had a plan for us to help us have optimal health, to treat our bodies like temples. And I am confident that the carnivore diet is what he intended because that's why he gave us the animals with the plants in case of starvation mode, um, knowing that we were probably going to hunt some of them to extinction, he gave us a plan B until we could figure out how to catch the smaller ones. And outside of that, um, you know, to help us live well and be healthy. And hopefully it, by, by doing that, you know, connect with him. I think that has always been his plan with the plants some of the plants okay like okay to eat as far as you have to survive and it, this won't kill you uh, versus the ones that were strictly intended for the animals and not for human consumption but that i think that's what it is i i honestly truly believe that what god wants us to do is have a carnivore based diet to get optimal health and treat our bodies as temples and not put crap in that is not going to help and for those of us who deal with inflammation and chronic pain and other issues that will simply make it worse. Guys, thank you so much for listening and for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please, 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 please do. Um, it would mean the world. And hey, the more of us that can connect and support each other, the better. Um, I'll try to mention the names of all the people I've spoken about in this video um, down below. And, um, as I say, guys, definitely you should check out their videos. They're amazing. Um, you can go down a really, really cool geeky science rabbit hole. And if that's your, if that's your jam, you're covered. Seriously. Um, other than that, that's me for now. Uh, I'm going to show you those before and after pictures quickly because they're kind of scary. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, and then, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, guys, so this picture, which I'm pulling up from my gallery on my computer, this was me at my heaviest at 190 pounds. Super bloated, unbelievable pain. Oh, yeah, it was not a good, it was not good. It was not a pretty sight. So this was me at about 170 pounds, I think. Yeah, just a couple months before that last picture. Um, so this was all 2020, by the way. And that is, again, how large and overweight and bloated I was. And, um, yeah. So, as you can see, um, with this picture, uh, which I took on July 29th, uh, significantly down in weight loss. And I'm smiling not because of that only, but because I truly have food freedom. And as you can see in my little descriptor there, um, my inflammation continues to be reduced and my pain continues to be reduced as well, which is absolutely amazing. And then this is me here. I just took this picture earlier today because I thought, you know what, this, this might be a really good update photo. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me today. Um, I think about 115 pounds down from 190 um, but massive reduction in inflammation and pain, almost no brain fog. Uh, my arthritis hasn't flared up in a couple of weeks and, um, overall just feeling really, really joyful, super grateful to God and just, yeah, just loving life. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you for watching. Um, please join. It'd be great to have you as part of the group. And just remember, like, it, it isn't about trying to get all this done instantly. You do have to ease into it, which is why I'm glad I went through keto first and then found my way down to um, strict carnivore. 
because I think otherwise it would have made me really sick. Um, but it, just because you feel like you do now doesn't mean it will last forever. You know, God may be waiting for you to try the carnivore diet as, as an answered prayer to ease pain and suffering. Hey, it's worth a shot. You know what? I was on the highest levels of painkillers and it didn't make a difference by the time those pictures were taken in 2020. And once the weight came off and the pain went down and the inflammation was reduced, my medication actually has an effect. Um, I get my annual checkup in a few weeks. Who knows? I might even be able to help get my doctor to help me reduce the pain medications, if not come off them completely. Um, and if that's your goal too, this could help. Again, not a medical professional. I'm simply sharing what has worked for me. And I hope maybe it would help you guys. If, if you've tried everything else and it hasn't really helped, what else have you got to lose? Other than maybe weight, some inflammation and chronic pain, I would think nothing. Uh, that's it for me, guys. Love you all to bits and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.